7 returns. Number one adventurer, K-7, from a United States secret agent who operated in 22 countries, on land, on sea, and in the air, brings you a story of today. Here is K-7. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you another story of a master spy, a man with whom we crossed swords many times during and after the Great War. This drama is different from those we have gone before. It's more of a human document. The story of a young girl who nearly ruined her life by becoming enmeshed in a plot to steal the coast defense secrets of a great nation. John Holbrook will take up at this point. Thank you, K-7. Part of the story which K-7 tells appeared recently in our newspapers. It was a brief dispatch that told of a young officer found guilty of selling military secrets to a foreign power. He played the last scene in his part of the drama in the early dawn. Conduct and becoming an officer and a gentleman for engaging in traitorous acts against the country which you have sworn to defend, for breaking your oath to uphold the honor and integrity of your flag. It is my duty to carry out the order of the military court before which you stood trial. May God give you courage. I have no need for more courage. Give your command. Squad, fire! were guilty, Mark. Guilty. But they had no right to make you face a firing squad. I heard the shots. Even the echo is gone. But I'll remember. It was murder. Legal murder. But I'll make them pay, Mark. I'll make them pay. Shari, for that was her first name, had been a blind for her sweetheart's correspondent. Without realizing that she was under suspicion, that her every move was watched, she crossed the border into another country and called on the master spy, Ladek Valkost. So, you are the girl to whom I addressed letters for... Please, do not mention his name. He... he is gone. You loved him? More than anything in the world. It was a most unfortunate affair. Mademoiselle, uh, what do you wish from me? I want to go on with his work. I have sworn to avenge his death. I want to continue to work for you. So, that is it. You were questioned before his trial? No, monsieur. You were not called before the military court? No, they did not know of me. I I saw Mark once in prison. I offered to testify, but he would not let me. He, he said that nothing would happen. And now you want revenge. Perhaps I will give you your chance, mademoiselle. Oh, please. I know how to send through information. I even know what you want. You know all about the calibers, range, and firing details of guns? Yes. You have many of my letters. Mademoiselle, I am going to let you continue to work with me. Do just as you have to do. I shall expect a report weekly. It will come through. One thing more. If you really want to avenge the death of your sweetheart, send me the new code book. Code book? One has been issued? Within the last three days, since your sweetheart's unfortunate affair. It is the one vital piece of information we need to act. A 
few days later, a tall, distinguished-looking officer in uniform sat in earnest conversation with a beautiful girl at an almost deserted cafe. This place will fill up soon, Yvonne. She always comes here in the afternoon. Just what do you want me to do, Em? I'll have to outline the case briefly, Yvonne. This girl, Shari, was in love with the young officer who was court-martialed. He used her as a blind to send information to Valcoast. She's still sending information? Uh, yes. Then why not arrest her? Ladik Valcoast is the man I want, Yvonne. Perhaps through her, we can get him across the border into this country. Now, here's my plan. I will point her out. Then you will go to her and present this letter. It introduces you, and it's signed with a forgery of Valco's name. Oh, she will think that I am also a spy. Yes. I shall continue to wear this uniform. You will tell her that I am short of money, that I am willing to talk, but that you must not be seen because the authorities are suspicious of you. Then you will bring her to me and introduce her. Here's the letter. Put it in your bag. It will be safe, Em. Yvonne, she comes. She is the small, blonde girl who is just entering. Em, that girl is little more than a child. You can't mean her. She is the one we must trap. A dangerous child. Em, I can't do it. You must be wrong. She, she, she should be caught. It Sometimes would... our duty is not pleasant, Yvonne. Now go to her at once. If there's a chance, well, we'll see about that later. Remember what you're to tell her and the letter. Bring her to me. But that girl is... Trust me, Yvonne. Now go. All right, Em. But I tell you, I don't like... Mademoiselle, I must talk with you. May I sit down? You want to talk with me? Yes, Charlie. I've been sent by a friend. This letter will introduce me. Take it, quick. Who is it from? Do not speak so loud. Read it. Oh, you are from Valcoast? Yes. Listen carefully. We must not be seen together. Do you see the young officer, third table from the end? Yes. Yes, I see him. He is poor. He needs money. I am going to take you to him. You know what to do? He will give me information? Anything you want to know. I must not be seen with you or him. The police know me. Valco's instructions are that I am to introduce the officer to you. Are you ready? Yes. Take me to him. <laughs> few days after their first meeting, M and Shari talked in the evening. They walked near the waterfront, and when they were alone, M pulled a book from under his uniform. We can talk here, mademoiselle. No one comes to the waterfront at night. You said you wanted the new code book. You have been able to get one? I must have money, mademoiselle. Otherwise, I face disgrace. Here. Look at this. Naval and military code. New issue. I'm sure you have it. Here, give it back to me. Oh, but I must send it away. No. No, you're too young to trust with information as important as this. The man who gets this book must come after it. It'll cost him one million francs. But sure. One million francs. It is my price. I have shown you the book. I trust you. Now you must trust me. Mademoiselle... Who is the man who wants these codes? Oh, I can't tell you. Then I will be forced to sell somewhere else. No, wait. He is Ladek Valcoast. Ladek Valcoast. Mademoiselle, you will send for him at once. Tell him you have the information he wants, but that it will only be delivered to him in person on the payment of one million francs. <laughs> The trap was set. Would the wily Valcoast walk into it? Three days later, Yvonne again contacted Shari and learned that Valcoast was coming. Following M's instructions, she would meet the spy and bring him to the cafe. You are experienced in these things. I will meet Valcoast at the railroad station. You will wait for the young officer in the cafe. Oh, but must I be there? You know both of them. I do not need to come. Are you losing your nerve, Shari? You wanted to avenge the death of your sweetheart? Oh, but... But I'm frightened. There's no need to be. I shall expect to see you at the cafe. Be sure the officer has the code book with him. Armed with pictures of Val Coast and a complete description, Yvonne met the spy at the railroad station. She told him that the officer who had faced the firing squad was her brother and that she worked with Charlie. 
Together they started for the cafe where Shari and M were waiting. They should arrive within a minute or two. You, you have the code book with you? Yes, it is here, in this brown envelope. Oh, give it to me. Why, what is the matter, mademoiselle? You're nervous. Oh, please, give it to me. I can't go through with it. Mark was wrong. This is my country, and it's your country. We can't sell our military secrets to our enemies. Well, I thought you wanted to avenge Mark. Oh, no, I've been wrong. Please, can't you understand? Give me the book before it's too late. I'll do away with it, destroy you, please. I'm afraid it's already too late, mademoiselle. You mean? No. I'd rather die, like Mark died. It's more honorable. Sorry. You're attracting attention. I don't care. I want Shari, to. Sorry, listen to me. I'll show you this book. It will not harm your country. It won't harm my country? No. Here, let me slip it out of this envelope. Now, open it. You, you are giving it to me? Look at it. Open it up. Why? Why, there's nothing in it. The pages are blank. Exactly, Shari. Do you mind if I sell that? You? You are... Don't try to run, Shari. I'm a secret agent. The man at the next table is the captain in charge of the military police. And I'm trapped. Well, will I hear the guns at dawn as Mark did? Pull yourself together. They're coming. Give me the book and sit quiet and don't try to leave. They are here, Monsieur Valkos. I saw them inside came in. This place is too open. Get the book as quickly as possible. You have the money ready? I will first examine what I buy. Of course. Put the money here on the table under my bag. The code book will be laid on the table. As soon as you have examined it, we will leave. Hurry, the officer's coming this way. Here is the money. Uh, Mademoiselle, this book is yours, I believe. Thank you, monsieur. Examine it quickly. I will, yes. Yes, it seems to be the one. Wait. Mademoiselle, you have tricked me. The pages of this book are blank. But the bullets in his revolver are not, Valkos. Don't try to move. You will never take me. He has already taken you, Valkos. Arrest him, Captain. You are under arrest as a spy. So also is this girl. Wait. Haven't you made a mistake, Captain? This girl, Shari, is my assistant. She's been working with me for many months. You you mean she is not a spy? He lies. She has sent me information. Of course she has. At my direction. Captain, arrest Valkos. Take him away. Leave the girl with me. If those are your orders. Come along, Valkos. Do not. <laughs> it's all over, Shari. Come. I'll take you home. Thank you. Em... You lie magnificently. The innocent often become involved with spies. Not all of them go free, as did Shari. Remember, spy activity is worldwide. It is a menace to world peace. If ever it falls to your lot to aid in a spy's capture, you will be serving the cause of humanity. Listen for my next story. This is K7 speaking.